I want to start with a team that hasn't been good, but I think is about to become incredibly formidable. And we know in this league, it is a coach quarterback league. Even Belichick get fired. Belichick got fired when he didn't have the right quarterback. Okay, so it starts with a quarterback. It's But hand in hand, 1A is the coach. Miami Brian Flores. Here's the story today from the Miami Herald. The Dolphins, 13 picks, are ready to put a bunch of them together, offer them to Cincinnati to get Joe Burrow. If I'm Cincinnati, I would do it. I would do it. I don't think Burrow's that much better than everybody else in terms of quarterbacks. In fact, I think if Tua is healthy, I like Tua. But Burrow can play. Um, The Dolphins want to trade up, and they'll give a bunch of picks to do it. So this is interesting. Most of us are products of our environment. I certainly am. There, Michael Jordan didn't do anything after James Worthy left in college and before Scottie Pippen. Even Michael Jordan, best basketball player ever, needed Phil Jackson, needed Scottie Pippen to get into the championship ring. Without him, couldn't beat Boston and Bird and McHale, couldn't beat the Pistons, Isaiah Lambeer and the fellas. So Andrew Luck is rare. Worst O-line in the league, worst team, wrong GM, wrong coach, 11-5 and five as a rookie. John Elway, Dan Marino, uh, Andrew Luck are maybe three of the most gifted quarterbacks, not winning us, not the most rings I've ever seen. They were going to win regardless. They were just going to win. El- I'm not saying Super Bowls, but to go 11-5 and five with a bad team, the wrong coach, and a bad GM, Andrew Luck is rare. Joe Burrow is not any of those guys. But I like Joe Burrow a lot more in Miami than I do in Cincinnati. This is different because I think Burrow's a B-plus prospect. I think Andrew Luck's an A-plus prospect. I think Trevor Lawrence next year is an A-plus prospect. Burrow's a B-plus to a low A, meaning he's going to need help. He can't – said this about Baker Mayfield. He's just not good enough to overcome dysfunction in Cleveland. He's not. That Luck can do it. Trevor Lawrence can do it. Marino can do it. Uh, uh, by the way, Troy Aikman's great. He couldn't do it. He was 1-15 in 15 until he got pieces around him. Okay, and Aikman's great. So Joe Burrow in Miami's different. First of all, it's a better free agent market. Okay, you can get players to no state tax in aqua water. Players don't want to really play in Cincinnati. They'll go to Miami. Second of all, the division's easier. You don't have to face the Ravens' defensive front. You don't have to face the Steelers' front seven. And by the way, the Browns, the strength of the Cleveland Browns is not the receiving core. It's their D-line personnel. You don't have to face them anymore. It's, you know, it's the dysfunctional Jets. It's it's New England without Tom Brady. It's Buffalo that's good but not, not special. So I get an easier division. I get a better free agent market. I get a richer owner. Stephen Ross, unlike Mike Brown, Stephen Ross is one of the top five richest owners. He'll spend money. Money's not the problem in Miami. Uh, The other thing is the weather. Cincinnati is cold and windy by Thanksgiving. Miami, the only thing you deal with is September humidity. And Joe Burrow does not have a great arm. It's fine. It's Tony Romo. It's good. It's not special. It's not going to make those big throws in wind. And I also think Brian Flores is a better coach than Zach Taylor. Now, we don't know for sure if either can coach, but here's what I know. Brian Flores, last nine games last year with Miami and their personnel, five and four. Belichick with Brady and his personnel, four and five. Miami was a better football team down the stretch than New England. I'm not joking. Look it up. And I think Flores is really sharp. I think he, I said this last year, I would have given him, if I had a ballot for my top three coaches of the year, wouldn't you put Brian Flores at three? I mean, seriously, what he overcame, what he did. Um, so I this Joe Burrow in Miami, oh, all right, that'll work. He's not going to get beat up by the Ravens front. He's not going to get beat up by the Steelers front seven. He's not going to get beat up by, Det- by, by Cleveland's front. No. No, he, 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 he's going to face some dysfunctional teams. Um, and, and by the way, we've said this before. Where you land matters. Sam Darnold and Baker, dysfunctional organizations, losing records. 
Lamar gets the Ravens. Mahomes gets Andy Reid and the Chiefs. Josh Allen gets a very good coaching staff and a new GM in Buffalo. Carson Wentz gets Philadelphia. What a shock. Winning records. Eh, It's crazy how it works, isn't it? Where you land matters unless you're Elway, Marino, Andrew Luck, or next year Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence will be able to overcome a lot of junk. Uh, So this is interesting. Dolphins interested in a big sweeping trade to get Joe Burrow. My my gut feeling is Cincinnati's not smart enough to do it. If I was Cincinnati and could get six picks, drop down a few slots, and still get a quarterback, I'd do it in two seconds. In two seconds. But, you know, Cincinnati's history is they don't take any gambles in the draft. So this is interesting. Like you thought I was going to do a show without Brady. Please, not possible. Tom Brady's goodbye call left Bill Belichick, quote, a little shocked. Belichick told a friend, he was a little taught, it was a little shocked. Tom Brady said, Bill, I'm leaving. After speaking with Kraft and Belichick, according to a source, Brady felt like there was a huge weight lifted off his shoulders. He's excited and fired up. So we talk about this from time to time. Everybody's got a hole. There's no perfect broadcaster, no perfect athlete, no perfect coach. The four best football coaches in my lifetime, Bill Walsh, Jimmy Johnson, Bill Parcells, and Bill Belichick. But they've all got a hole. And Belichick's hole is he lacks warmth. He won't play psychologist. He's rigid. He's not viewed as friendly and warm. And Tom Brady's all about warm. Tom Brady just chose the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over a much better roster with the Chargers. Why? Closer to family. That's who Tom is. You watch the documentary Tom vs. Time. He's a family guy. Hugging his sons. Just the way he lives his life. His sister, his dad... I mean, he, he moved closer to his family going to Tampa. There were better places to go with better rosters, better offensive lines, better, better personnel, more winning in their recent history. No, he chose Tampa. That's why and I said before, I never took Tampa seriously. I never even thought about Tampa. I said, I'd hear the rumors, and I thought, Tampa? That, he's too big for that brand. And I got to go to Tampa. He went to Tampa. And this is where Parcells... And Jimmy Johnson are better than Belichick. There's a warmth to him. I don't know Bill Parcells. Talked to him six or seven times, maybe more. I do know Jimmy Johnson, I think, fairly well. There is a warmth to him. I've, I've stood next to Jimmy and seen him get emotional more than once. Uh, he, he's got incredibly close football friends. Uh, Bradshaw and Dave Wanstead. They tell hysterical stories. Every Sunday when I come into Fox, when I do that weekend Fox NFL kickoff show with Gonzalez, Vic, Chris Thompson, Peter Schrager, when I do that show, first thing I do every time, I go over and talk to Jimmy Johnson for about 15 minutes before I go into my production meeting. Jimmy's fantastic. Uh, and there's a warmth to Jimmy and, and Bill Parcells. They're psychologists. The other uh, was two days ago, three days ago this weekend. Was it Sunday or Monday night? I watched the two Bills. It was Belichick, Parcells, a 30 for 30. And my takeaway on this is that Parcells, you know, Parcells is verbal and he's a talker and he laughed at himself and he was embarrassed. Bill is stoic. Bill grew up with a mom that spoke seven languages and a dad that helped create scouting. It's a very academic childhood. Academics can be cold. Academics can be rigid. Academics are data, research, and fact-based. Sometimes Belichick is cold. Tom Brady is warm. And if you listen to players, how often have I brought a player on my show in the last two years, three years? And when you talk about their relationship, Andy Reid's a prime example where they'll say about Andy Reid, Chris Jones said this. Uh, Who do we have? Frank Martin said this. They're like, you know, Andy cares about me. Andy cares about me. It matters. I mean, don't you don't you kind of want to think your boss cares about you, you know, beyond the money you produce for him and the revenue and the ratings and the trophies you produce for him? Kind of matters. You want to know they care about you. And that's the hole in Belichick's game. He's not pro player. He doesn't have a lot of warmth. He's academics to a fault. Uh, the socialization part. I mean, we, we unless you live in New England, many people didn't even know until a couple years ago he had his son on the staff. I mean, it's just that's just Bill's hole. And everybody's got one. 
But uh, Belichick was apparently shocked when Tom Brady called him. So um, there you go. I think it's 2020 athletes more than ever want to be appreciated as humans, not just football players.